Oh, the Enneagram, where do I begin? Since I'm a type two, I thought I'd help you understand the Enneagram. Hi! Before I get into the Enneagram, like this video, share this video. I am getting better at asking for what I need. Hard thing for type twos, by the way. And what I need is for you to share like, subscribe to this channel, do whatever you do to get the word out about the super brave teacher. That's me, Joel Karlovsky, the super brave teacher. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Do that now. Pause the video, like it, share it, subscribe to the channel. You're awesome. You are an Enneagram. If you are an Enneagram expert or fanatic or have read lots of literature on it, this probably isn't a video for you. I have read lots of literature, I have, I am a fanatic, and I'm probably not the best spokesperson for the Enneagram. That being said, let's dive into my personality type. The Enneagram has nine personality types, and each personality type has a basic want and desire and a basic fear. I am a type two, so after taking the paragraph test, you can Google Enneagram paragraph test. There's multiple ways to figure out what type you are. And it has to be the most authentic thing for yourself. Don't just try to be something you're not. If you learn anything from this channel, it's be who you are, you are enough. After you do that, you figure out your type. And my type is type two on the Enneagram, which is the helper, which is like ding, 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 when I heard that the first time. And my basic desire and want is to be loved, to be loved and to be wanted. And to my basic fear is to be unloved and unwanted, which is so true, like, wow. And the more I read into it, the more I realized, wait, not everyone's like me? Wait, when, when someone else comes in the room, you can't just like wait to help them and see what they need and do these things for them? Like, really? You're, you're not afraid that someone's not gonna love you? You're not afraid that you're gonna be unlovable or unwantable? What? Yeah, yeah. So the. Enneagram really helps you dig into these personality traits of yours. And you realize that anyone can be a healthy one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You can be an average or an unhealthy one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's nothing good or bad or better or worse about being who you are. Amen. But it's something to look at and analyze. So. I'm gonna dig in to my type. I thought it would be fun to quote the Enneagram Institute and then throw in some of my stuff on the side. So I'm gonna read and then throw in some stuff like my mental dialogue that I'm thinking while I read this. It says, <clears throat> When twos are healthy and in balance, they are really loving, helpful, generous, and considerate. Amen. How did they know? That's me, right? People are drawn to them like bees to honey. What can I say? That's me. Healthy twos warm others in the glow of their hearts. They enliven others with their appreciation and attention, helping people to see positive qualities in themselves that they had not previously recognized. Yes, 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 that's me. I'm the universe's cheerleader. My heart glows. Hello. 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 In short, healthy twos are the embodiment of the good parents that everyone wishes they had. Someone who sees them as they are, understands them with immense compassion, helps and encourages them with infinite patience, and is always willing to lend a hand. What can I say? I'm the beacon of compassion. I have patience in spades. I'm here to help you. Just tell me what you need. I got gotcha. That's That's just how awesome I am, you know? Healthy twos open our hearts because they are already so open, and they show us the way to be more and deeply richly human. Aww. They see me. They see that my heart is open. They see that it's open for you. That's who I am. But here comes the good stuff. <laughs> it says, perhaps the biggest obstacle facing twos in their inner work is having to face their underlying center fear of worth worthlessness. Preach. I feel so freaking worthless sometimes. Beneath the surface, they fear that they are without value in themselves, and so they must be or do something extraordinary in order to win love and acceptance for others. Woo! I talked about this so many times on these videos, haven't I, friends? If I'm not doing something, am I worthy? And if I'm not proving my love, will I be loved? When I came out, this was like, one of the biggest struggles for me is, who am I now? Who am I now? 
if I'm not this person and you think this of me, am I going to be worthless to you? In the average to unhealthy levels, twos present a false image of com being completely generous and unselfish and not wanting any kind of payoff for themselves when in fact they have enormous expectations and un acknowledge emotional needs. I do that. That is... It's like, don't you get it? Don't you see that I'm doing this for you? Don't you see that I love you so much? Don't you see that I'm doing this? And that I also need this and want this and expect this from you too? But... It took me a long time to realize, like, wait, you're not a mind reader. You don't know what I need. And as a two, I'm always doing it. I'm not asking for what I need. So it's impossible. It's It has been so hard for me to get my needs met because I'm not communicating it. It says, average unhealthy twos seek validation of their worth by obeying the super ego's demands to sacrifice themselves. Girl, I have sacrificed. I mean... But it, and then I tell myself, but it's all for the good of the children. It's all for the good of compassion and bravery and my husband. It's all good for the church, whatever it is. And we get this martyrdom in us that says like, but as long as I'm doing it for fill in the blank. They believe they must put others first and be loving and unselfish if they want to get loved. It's this whole like tit for tat mentality. If I do this, I will get love back. I hopefully will get love back when I do this. And it becomes very exchange worthy, right? The problem is that putting others first makes two secretly angry and resentful. Resentful is a gentle word for what it gets like when you're really unhealthy, like I have been in the past. It's more like a ragey resentment. You get to this depth of like, what the, mm, why aren't you doing, like, don't you see me? And it's like, 99% of the time, I will give, 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 but if that 1%, when I actually need something, you don't help me out, like, woo, I get to my unhealthy stage, which is really something to read and look at, right? Nevertheless, they eventually erupt in various ways, disrupting two's relationships and revealing the inauthenticity of many of the average unhealthy twos. Claims about their depth of love. So, I read this to share all of me with you. Like I say, it'd be easy for me to sh always have this like perfect persona, the super brave teacher for you. And I have done years and years of therapy to make sure that how I'm living is my best, authentic, healthiest self. And when I hear that voice creeping in saying, oh, you gotta do this to prove your worth, I get to call myself on that. And I get to use my gifts of helping for myself. I get to listen to my needs and say, Joel, I see you, I love you. <laughs> Joel, I see you, I love you. You are lovable, you are wantable, you are worthy. You do not have to do anything to receive love. And it's okay for you to ask for help. So I think it's super important for the Enneagram and anyone using the Enneagram or any personality type test to not like, I'm a horrible person. Let me use this test to, to validate my shame narrative and to say how sucky I am. You use it to learn and grow, to see the good and, and the hard in who you are. And then you keep sharing your stories and you keep realizing like, wait, I'm not alone. There are many people, especially teachers who feel this way and we gotta get our own needs met. We gotta put it out there what we need. So, there I am. So what I need right now is for you to like this video, share this video, comment on this video. What type are you on the Enneagram? Did you take the paragraph test yet? Go check that out. Let's make sure that it's not a one-sided relationship. That's, that's what I do. Like, I'm like, I got it. I will meet you 95% if you give me the 5%. Oh, not 5%, I'll... I can do 97%, 98, 99, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. So I invite you to join this relationship with me and share your story and meet me in the middle somewhere too because it's worth it, you're worth it, you're awesome. You are loved, you are appreciated just for being you. And I'm gonna say to myself again, Joel, Enneagram type two, helper you. You are worthy and loved, and you are worthy and loved so much just for being who you are. Just for being who you are. Bye, friends.
everything we've got. A critter and regretter and forgetter is everything I'm not. I'll take care of you. Love you just because.